from Hannibal's tastiest meal preps to Slip and Jimmy's messiest exploits. These shows are proof that some TV prequels are even better than the stories they came from. A prequel to a reboot, Caprica hit screens in 2010, a year after the dramatic ending of science fiction drama Battlestar Galactica. Battlestar had been a relaunch of a short-lived sci-fi adventure from 1978, with producer Ronald D. Moore turning the campy family adventure into a gritty war story that dazzled audiences with dark, sobering storylines and unpredictable twists and turns. Caprica was entirely different, a sci-fi political thriller set decades earlier on a thriving world where AI technology is in its infancy. Taking place nearly 60 years before the Earth-Cylon War of BSG, the show explored the relationship between two rival families, the Greystones and the Adamas, and saw the advent of the technology that would lead to the Cylon race. I'm Zoe, and the Avatar, and the robot. Like some kind of what you call it, the reparter trinity. Starring Eric Stoltz and Isai Morales as family patriarchs Daniel Greystone and Joseph Adama, respectively, the series set itself apart from BSG with a focus on political and religious intrigue and profound personal drama. What would you do if you had the chance to, to be with your daughter again? Packed with social allegory, Caprica garnered rave reviews from critics. The Guardian called the series, dense and intelligent sci-fi, complex, bizarre, and ambitious. Despite the acclaim, Caprica lasted just a single season, but it's remained a cult favorite ever since. A Batman prequel arrived in 2014 in the form of Gotham, a grim, hard-boiled crime series set in the city Batman would one day protect. Bruce. My, my name is Bruce Wayne. In it, Bruce Wayne is a young boy, so the series focuses more on Gotham PD Lieutenant James Gordon played by Ben McKenzie, and his efforts to combat the city's criminal underworld. The series opened with the killing of Gotham socialites Thomas and Martha Wayne. As the show progressed, audiences met many of Batman's eventual rogues gallery, with future villains The Penguin, Catwoman, The Riddler, and The Joker making appearances, as well as several new baddies, like Jada Pinkett Smith as Fish Mooney. Only my friends <laughs> call me Fish. Praised for its slick production and stylish storytelling, Gotham ran for five seasons, ending with a now-adult Bruce Wayne donning cape and cowl to become the Dark Knight. The Big Bang Theory was a multi-camera sitcom about three geeky friends in Pasadena who fill their days with video games, comic books, and RPGs. There's just some quantum mechanics with a little string theory doodling around the edges. That part there, that's just a joke. It's a spoof of the Born Oppenheimer approximation. A smash hit for 12 astonishing seasons, Big Bang became a franchise in 2017, with the debut of prequel series Young Sheldon, about the awkward youth of child prodigy Sheldon. Young actor Ian Armitage plays Sheldon, whose trials and tribulations include skipping four grades. This makes him a social misfit, and yet, occasionally, a hero. Him being so young isn't, like, weird. I'm basically 50. And we're basically 12, so it all works out. Balancing a tough school schedule with problems at home, he also has to deal with the frustrations of having a dimmer-witted older brother. Morning. Morning. I slept in the nude last night, felt every little breeze. A heartfelt and heartwarming family sitcom that brings a fresh angle to the character. With stories about Sheldon's social struggles, Young Sheldon was a big hit, with IndieWire calling out its strong mix of comedy and drama and its empathetic approach to the central character. Perry Mason began in the 1930s as a series of novels by Earl Stanley Gardner before becoming a series of films, a radio drama, and eventually a hit TV series starring Raymond Burr that ran for nearly 300 episodes, beginning in 1957. Revived briefly in the 1970s as the new Perry Mason, Burr returned to the role for a series of TV movies all the way through the 1990s. No further questions. After a decades-long absence, the unflappable lawyer reappeared in the 2020 prequel series Perry Mason, starring Matthew Reese. You were in the war, weren't you? The way you hold your cigarette, hiding the unburdened palm. I guess I'm still trying not to give him something to shoot at. The series takes place years before Mason becomes a lawyer. In this darker drama, Mason is a beleaguered private investigator whose business is struggling during the Great Depression. The series' first season tells a single story across eight episodes, as Mason investigates a grisly child murder case. The show's strongest asset might be its phenomenal cast, 
which includes Tatiana Maslany and John Lithgow, among many other standouts. Praised for its sophisticated story, compelling mystery, evocative style, and overall panache, Perry Mason built off decades of previous stories to provide a new spin on an old classic. Born from the mind of Muppets creator Jim Henson, The Dark Crystal was an iconic 80s family fantasy film full of ancient relics and mystical powers. It became an enduring cult classic thanks to its incredible design, captivating story, and blend of lighthearted playfulness with a foreboding sense of doom. Though there was talk of a sequel for years, a prequel eventually materialized, The Dark Crystal, The Age of Resistance. Released in 2019 as a Netflix original, the series was helmed by action director Louis Leterrier and boasted an all-star cast voicing its ensemble of puppet actors, including Mark Hamill, Taron Edgerton, Aquafina, Jason Isaacs, and Helena Bonham Carter. These are the world's greatest puppeteers. Working with Louis Leterrier, the brilliant director, it's a look that you've never seen before. Set long before the events of the film, Age of Resistance sees a group of childlike Gelflings on a journey to unite their people to fight back against the devious and tyrannical Skeeksis that rule them. The series delivered a powerful story of friendship, loyalty, and indomitable spirit, gorgeously produced with sumptuous visuals and a story that expanded on Henson's original, The Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance, was a magical treat that did more than justice to a classic, making for a stellar fantasy series in its own right. Director Peter Jackson's groundbreaking Lord of the Rings trilogy brought J.R.R. Tolkien's fantasy world to the mainstream in the early 2000s. Expertly realized with a lavish production budget, it quickly became iconic. Always remember, Frodo, the ring is trying to get back to its master. It wants to be found. Following a trilogy of prequels adapted from The Hobbit, many wondered where the franchise would go next but it would be a decade before Amazon's Rings of Power prequel series landed in 2022. Rings of Power is set in the second age of Middle-earth, long before the events of Lord of the Rings, yet includes several crossover characters, notably immortal elves Elrond and Galadriel. As new evil rises in the East, the different races, dwarves, elves, hobbits, and man, prepare to rise up and meet it head on. The series is a visual treat, a true spectacle that brings the cinematic experience to the small screen. Story-wise, it expands upon themes from Jackson's trilogy. Strong performances, an intriguing plot, and plenty of surprises have helped it garner critical acclaim too, with Variety calling it a perfectly winning adaptation that unfolds swashbuckling adventures with clear reverence and affection for the considerable mythos behind it. A massive success for the streaming giant, it's anyone's guess where the series will go following its debut season, but it's already proven itself a worthy addition to Tolkien's world. In 2001, the comedy troupe known as The State produced an offbeat comedy film, Wet Hot American Summer, that followed the antics of a group of teen counselors at a 1980s summer camp. Members of The State were joined by a remarkable cast, including young Paul Rudd, Bradley Cooper, and Amy Poehler, alongside veterans David Hyde Pierce, Molly Shannon, and Janine Garofalo. Though it flopped in theaters, its surreal humor and raunchy tone made it a cult classic. More than a decade later in 2015, a prequel series arrived on Netflix, Wet Hot American Summer, First Day of Camp. The entire cast, now 15 years older, returned, still playing teenagers in a story set several months before the film, on the first day of camp in 1981. Even Rudd, Cooper, and Polar, who had since achieved mega stardom, came back for the eight-episode series, with the likes of Kristen Wiig and Jason Schwartzman joining them. Lauded by critics for its wild, off-the-wall comedy, the show became a big hit for Netflix. In 2017, it was followed by a sequel series, Wet Hot American Summer, 10 years later. Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho was a seminal 1960s thriller that almost single-handedly gave rise to the modern psychological horror genre. Psycho centers on a young woman who winds up in a hotel run by Norman Bates, a twisted madman whose obsession with his own mother turns him into a killer. Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. A Hollywood classic and box office smash, it was followed by a few lesser sequels and a TV movie called Bates Motel in 1987. In 2013, when the title was repurposed for a prequel television series starring Freddie Highmore as young Norman, no one had particularly high hopes. The series introduces a teenage Norman, whose mother Norma, played by Vera Farmiga, purchases a motel after the death of her husband 
trouble strikes when Norma is forced to kill an attacker, leading to a series of cover-ups and conspiracies that threaten to expose them both. Surrounded by violence, Norman's fragile mental state deteriorates. As he slowly spirals into madness, his mother struggles to deal with his condition. Bates Motel is a riveting psychological thriller that ran for five seasons. You told her something happens to me when I black out. You said I change, that I'm not myself. Who am I, mother? Who am I and what do I do? The final season was a jaw-dropping remake of the original film. The Los Angeles Times called the series twisty, moody, and modern. Bates Motel is a blueprint for how to craft a clever, fresh prequel to an iconic property. The 1991 film Silence of the Lambs brought author Thomas Harris's novel to the big screen with a plum. Oh, Clarice, your problem is you need to get more fun out of life. Star Anthony Hopkins gave a spine-chilling and Oscar-winning performance as sociopathic serial killer Hannibal Lecter. Technically, this was Lecter's second big-screen appearance. He originally featured in Michael Mann's 1986 flick, Manhunter. Danish actor Mass Mikkelsen took on the role for a 2013 NBC prequel series titled Hannibal, which chronicled the years before Lecter was imprisoned for a series of cannibalistic murders. Drawing mostly on material from Harris's novel Red Dragon, the show saw renowned psychiatrist Lecter assisting intrepid FBI agent Will Graham, played by Hugh Dancy, as a criminal profiler. Not fond of eye contact, I am. The eyes are distracting. You see too much, you don't see enough. Created by Brian Fuller, the series reimagined the relationship between the two future adversaries as Lecter, whose murderous inclinations are explored in secret, becomes obsessed with the young FBI agent. It seems you have an admirer. You think someone sent me in here because they admire me? Dark, disturbing, and bold, Hannibal pushed the boundaries of network censorship and was rewarded with universal acclaim. Star Trek had done prequels before, with the 2001 series Enterprise set in the early days of Starfleet. 2017 Star Trek Discovery also takes place in the past, just a decade before Kirk and Spock. In that show's second season, we meet Captain Pike and the USS Enterprise. In 2022, their story spun off into its own series, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, starring Anson Mount, Ethan Peck, and Rebecca Romain as classic characters Pike, Mr. Spock, and Number One. It explored early missions of the Enterprise that had only previously been hinted at, joined by a mix of returning franchise icons like Uhura. Oh, uh, can I help? No. Nurse Chapel and Dr. Mbenga, plus new characters Luan Nunian Singh, Ensign Ortegas, and Andorian engineer Hemmer, the series was a retro return to sci-fi adventure. While Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Picard focused on darker, more adult-themed, serialized stories, Strange New Worlds successfully recaptured the classic Trek spirit with family-friendly, episodic stories that took the crew to new worlds each week. With a strong cast and a big budget, the series refreshed the final frontier. Strange New Worlds was hailed as a return to form with a stirring mix of big adventure, thought-provoking science fiction, humor, and heart. Creating a spin-off of an acclaimed series can be risky. No matter how good it is, it may always live in the shadow of its parent series. Such was the predicament when the 16-time Emmy award-winning Breaking Bad announced that supporting star Bob Odenkirk would lead spin-off series Better Call Saul. The fact that it would be a prequel and would run alongside the final seasons of Breaking Bad made it even trickier. Did you just bring Bob into a hospital? What? Was I supposed to leave it on his car? But Odenkirk and series creator Vince Gilligan pulled off the impossible. What the hell do you think you're doing? I need Saul. I need him right now. The show, which debuted in 2015, explored more of unscrupulous lawyer Saul Goodman's shady past and underhanded dealings, while appearances from Giancarlo Esposito as Gus Fring and Jonathan Banks as Mike Ehrmantraut helped flesh out the Breaking Bad universe by enriching old stories with new context. In time, the events of the series caught up with its predecessor, which even allowed for the brief return of Bryan Cranston as Walter White. With a more left-of-center vibe and a colorful cast of quirky, eccentric characters, Better Call Saul was a series with its own identity, while still delivering gut-wrenching, nail-biting crime stories. Standing on the shoulders of a giant, the series may have soared even higher, with The Guardian declaring it even more profound and outstripping Gilligan's former series in nearly every way.